Welcome everybody to another one of our M1 Pro MacBook Pro videos. What do you mean move? I'm, Shut up. I'm shooting a video, Erin. Nobody's going to watch it anyway. I've got a better video idea for you. Okay, what's this idea? The viewers have questions and you're going to answer them. That's interesting. That's a, that's a really good idea, actually, because um, we did say to you guys, uh, if there was anything you wanted to see us testing on the M1 Pro and M1 Max uh, MacBook Pros, to drop a comment. And we have been looking at all of those comments, and um, some of the suggestions actually we're going to make full videos of, but there are a collection of smaller questions, things that we could cover off maybe in a compilation episode. Is, it, is that what you, uh, you had in mind? Yeah, yeah, exactly that. And it's really good that you thought of that, Erin. Yeah, I'm smart like that. What's the first question? It's a really nice and simple one. It's, we'd love to know if raw 4K footage is editable on external M.2 SSDs Thunderbolt 3. Okay, did you understand anything of what Absolutely you just said? Absolutely not. Would you like to know what those things? Absolutely okay. not. Okay, but the viewers might like to. Probably. So uh, for your benefit, Mob Genius B, thanks for the question. So if you're putting a, an NVMe drive into a Thunderbolt 3 enclosure, then you can expect really fast transfer speeds on these Macs. I know we have reported that the USB performance of these things is a little bit subpar, but uh, Thunderbolt performance is fine. Uh, and raw 4K footage, you don't specify which codec you're, you're going to be using, and there's, there's obviously quite a few. We've got ProRes, B-RAW, RedRAW. Um, they all vary, but uh, none of them is so large that you wouldn't be able to edit from a Thunderbolt 3 SSD drive. So I hope that answers your question. Erin? Yes. What's the next question? Outdoor brightness and usability test, please. Okay, so this is from Jayanth Kumar. Thanks for the question. Uh, not really a question, sort of a, a request. So you want to be able to see the screen if you're working outdoors. Um, of course, these new MacBook Pros have got much better screens in. They're mini LED and they go to a maximum peak brightness of 1600 nits, which is an awful lot. Are you familiar with nits? <laughs> uh, so what I think we need to do is just get these outside to do a test under direct sunlight. We live in England and it's November. Let me rephrase. What we need to do is send you outside to test this. Dave. The sun's not coming out and I'm cold. Uh, just keep waiting. So how was that, Erin? Great. <laughs> of course, truth be told, I didn't really need to send you outside to, uh, to test that out because I already knew the answer. And that is that the, the screen on the new MacBooks is the same brightness level as the screen on the previous MacBook Pro and that is 500 nits. It only goes up to that peak brightness when you're displaying HDR content. Uh, I actually popped out earlier and there was some sunshine and uh, I filmed it with uh, a 16 inch Intel MacBook Pro and the new 16 inch M1 Pro. And as you can see side by side, the screens are really the same brightness, but you should be able to detect a difference in the quality of the screens. Obviously with that mini LED, we're getting much deeper blacks, whereas the older screen looks a little bit more washed out. But when it comes to brightness and usability in the sunlight, they're exactly the same, I would say. Uh, so 500 nits is a nice bright display, um, but like any laptop display that's got a glass front to it, it's never going to work that well under direct sunlight. Of course, here in Britain with our grey overcast skies, uh, it works quite well outdoors. Thanks, Dave. You're welcome. I'm really holding myself back from beating you with that tripod over there. All of you guys, you think Erin is so sweet and innocent. It's physical abuse, the threats of physical abuse. What's next? The next question is about X-Plane. X-Plane what? No, explain the game. Which game? No, the game X Plane 11, the game. Oh, the flight simulator. Yeah, they would love to know how well X Plane 11 runs on these machines. Ah, okay, I've seen a few people asking this actually. So this one is, uh, we've selected David Bradshaw for the comment. Thank you, David. Uh, so I downloaded the X Plane 11 demo and I used the standard graphics settings. I didn't change anything at all. Apart from, I found this one option here that said use metal driver for faster rendering, so I switched that on. Uh, and I've just got the AI flying a 747 here on my laptop, and you can see it's running really smoothly. If we just pan the camera around, 
uh, this is really usable. Um, I haven't found anywhere which will tell you what frame rate the game is running. So I couldn't tell you what the FPS is, but it looks really smooth to me. Now this is running on my M1 Max with the 24 core GPU and 32 gigs of RAM. So let's put in the 16 inch M1 Pro next to it. This has the 16 core GPU and 16 gigabytes of RAM. We'll do the same thing again. Uh, and again, it looks really smooth. It's very playable. So if you're a fan of X-Plane 11 and flight simulators generally, then good news, it runs really well on these new M1 Max. That's probably very exciting for you, Erin. I imagine you do a lot of flight simming in your spare time. I do. I mm. do indeed. Mm. Have you got another question? I do. Nobody has done a video on the low power mode performance of M1 Pro or M1 Max. Good question from Run for Peace 2020. Again, actually not a question, just a statement. Uh, we're not going to do a full video on it, but I was curious actually when I saw your comment. So I did pop my uh, M1 Max here into low power mode and I found the system to be really responsive, but I thought let's just do a, a Geekbench CPU test. I'll just put the scores up on screen now. It scores 1363 on single core, so it has ramped down that performance quite a lot. Uh, Multi-core score is at 10,568, so we've dropped about uh, 2,500 points on the full power mode. And this actually just brings this particular laptop in line with the eight core entry level model. It's still loads of performance for everyday use. So low power mode, it seems like a really good thing. And actually, uh, given the way the battery does drain quite quickly, if you're doing anything intensive, uh, using low power mode in between those tasks might be a good shout for extending your battery life for the day. Wouldn't you agree, Erin? I would indeed. Erin agrees, so that's good. What's, what else have we got? <laughs> Our last question is, do your fans kick in easily for basic office tasks such as MS Office and general web browsing? Is it loud and what are the thermals like? Good question from Sunset Nova. There's a few sort of questions in there. What are the thermals like? Um, really good, actually. Are the fans loud? Well, I guess we ought to test it. I could probably answer this question though without... No, we're gonna test it. I, I think I already know. I think I've got a better idea. <laughs> You made a mistake. Erin, look, I, I don't think this is what the person meant when they asked us to test Microsoft Office to the limit. You said we were gonna do testing, so we're gonna do testing. Look, I've done 47 pages of this. Can I at least use copy and paste? Absolutely not. Type every letter and mean it. I don't mean it. Uh, so thanks for that long, arduous and ultimately completely pointless test that you sent me, Erin. Anytime, anytime. Yeah, thank you. The thermals on these new notebooks are really good. Uh, Apple has been quite conservative though with the fan profile, so it never really spins up that fast. And when it's at one of those lower speeds, you really can't hear the fans running at all. In order to get them to spin at maximum speed, I don't even know what you would have to do, short of installing an app like TG Pro and manually setting them to run at max, because I've never been able to get them to run at full speed in any of my heavy duty testing. Uh, even when you're doing a really heavy workload, uh, I was exporting a 12K video the other day, um, transcoding from one codec to another, and that didn't even spin the fans up to an audible level. Uh, so it would be very unlikely that Microsoft Office would cause the fans to spin up on these new MacBooks. A good question though, and uh, thanks everybody for all of your comments. Keep them coming. I uh, love reading all of your comments uh, on these videos, and we will try to test as much as we can. Uh, maybe doing some more of these compilation videos, Erin. Um, well done for coming up with the idea. Of course. Excellent. Um, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, you're going to want to do that and uh, maybe click the bell icon so that you can be notified next time Erin comes up with a good idea. It's always. I've always got a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> I've never had a bad idea in my life. <laughs> uh, so thanks in advance for all of those subscriptions, your shares, your likes, even your dislikes, and uh, we'll see you again soon for some more geekery. I want to wave.